Assalamu alaikum, my name is Amrak Tehar. The topic I am going to describe here is silicon heat energy storage. Silicon. Silicon is a chemical element with the symbol SI and atomic number 14. When we talk about its properties, it is hard, brittle crystalline solid with a blue-gray metallic luster and is tetravalent metalloid and a semiconductor. It belongs to the 14th group in the periodic table. Silicon is the eighth most common element in the universe, but very rarely occurs as a pure element. More than 90% of the Earth's crust is composed of silicate minerals, making silicon the second most abundant element in the Earth's crust. Silicon polymers. Silicon may be considered analogous to the mineral silicates in which the methyl group of the silicon correspond to the isoelectronic oxygen of the silicates. When we talk about their properties, they are quite stable to extreme temperature, oxidation, and water and have useful dielectric, antistic, and anti-foaming properties. They are resistant over long periods of time to ultraviolet radiations, weathering, and inert physiologically. They are fairly unreactive, but do react with concentrated solutions bearing the hydroxide ion and fluorinating agent, and occasionally may even be used as a mild reagent for the selective synthesis. When we talk about the silicon polymers the structure, here we can see silicon is attached to two methyl group and an oxygen that is the repeating unit in this polymer. Thermal energy storage. Thermal energy storage is one of the important uh, one of the form of energy storage in this case a material gains energy when increasing its temperature and loses it when decreasing taking advantage of this property make it possible to use different materials with different thermal properties and achieve various results which can lead to different thermal energy storage applications when we talk about its process its process is simple it consists of three process three steps first one is absorption second one is storage third one is the release absorption in the form of heat storage and then release in the form of electricity that we need importance when we talk about the importance thermal storage energy storage is much cheaper than the electricity storage it has a high potential of integrating intermittent resources it can help to balance energy demand on daily weekly and even seasonal basis it can reduce the peak demand energy consumption easily the major benefit include that it help in a reduction of carbon dioxide emission and its cost while increase the overall efficiency of the system and uh, the application of thermal energy storage with renewable energy sources, waste, heat, surplus energy production can replace heat and coal generation from fossil fuels. As a result, the greenhouse gases emission will reduce. When we talk about the types of the thermal energy storage, there are basically three types, sensible heat, latent heat, and thermochemical heat storage. The first two ones, sensible heat and latent heat, are mostly used. Every type has its own advantages and disadvantages. Sensible heat storage, also called as SHS, is the most straightforward method. It simply means the temperature of some medium is either increased or decreased. Its advantages include this type of storage is the most commercially available out of the three. Other techniques are less developed. The materials are generally inexpensive and safe. One of the cheapest and mostly commonly used option is a water tank. But materials such as molten salts or metals can be heated to high temperature. Therefore, they offer a higher storage capacity. Sensible heat storage is stored by raising the temperature of a solid or liquid. Basically, uh, it utilizes the heat capacity and the change in temperature of the material during the whole process of charging and discharging. Basically, the heat stored in a material depends upon its final temperature, initial temperature, its heat capacity, and uh, its change in temperature and mass of the material we are using. Here in the formula, T1 is the initial temperature, Tf is the final temperature, Q is the heat stored in the material, Cp is the specific heat of the material, and M is the mass of the material in which we are doing the whole process. The, the application of this is hot silicon technology. Here, here we use molten silicon or solid silicon, offers much higher storage temperature than the salt with consequent greater capacity and efficiency. It is being researched as a possible and more efficient energy storage technology. Silicon is able to store more than one megawatt or of energy per cubic meter at 1400 degrees Celsius. That is the melting point of the silicon. 
And additional advantage is the abundance of the silicon that is second most abundant element on earth crust. Molten silicon uh, thermal energy storage is currently being developed by the Australian company, 1414 degrees, as a more energy efficient storage technology with a combined heat and more power output. The next one is sun in a box operation. Sun in a box would store renewable energy for the grid. Here, the design stores heat generated by the excess electricity from solar or wind power in large tanks of hot white molten silicon and then converts the light from the glowing metal back into the electricity when it's needed. That's why it's called sun in a box, like it's shiny when molten. The researcher estimate that the, such a system would be vastly and more affordable than lithium ion batteries, which have been proposed as a viable, though expensive method to store renewable energy. They also estimate that the system would cost about half as much as pumped hydroelectric storage, the cheapest form of the energy storage to date. Next one is latent heat storage. It applies energy to cause a phase change transition in a material that subsequently stores energy in the form of latent heat. That material is referred as PCM. The material we are going to use here is called as PCM, phase change material, and is the important or key element in the whole process. During these transitions, heat can be added or extracted without affecting the material temperature, and it is an advantage over the SHS technologies. Storage capacities are often higher as well as compared to SHS technologies. There are multitude of PCMs available, including salts, polymers, gels, paraffins, metal alloys, is with different application and properties. This allows for a more target-oriented system design. When we talk about the advantages, in this system, the energy is stored in the form of plated heat and converted when we are in need to electricity upon or by using thermophotovoltaic cells that are called TPV cells. The proposed system enables a thermal energy storage of up to one megawatt or per cubic meter, which is 10 to 20 times higher than that of lead acid batteries, two to six times higher than that of lithium batteries, and five to 10 times higher than TES systems utilized in the CSP applications. So it's beneficial if we use latent heat storage. Desirable quantities, uh, qualities that include late, high latent heat and thermal conductivity, these both can be achieved by using this system. The discharge efficiency of the ideal latent heat storage system is 50%. Now, however, in realistic discharge efficiency, it's included the 20 to 45% output. Now, why we are we using silicon? We are using silicon as a phase change material because it's have extremely high latent heat that is 1800 joule per gram it has high melting point that is 1410 degrees celsius its thermal conductivity is high and the last one but not the least it's low cost that is 1.7 dollars per kg that is very cheap and its abundance on the earth crust make it possible to use this as a pcm material now system description there are two ways we can use uh, silicon uh, as heat energy storage first one by storing electric energy second one is by using or by storing solar energy both system description is the same in the center there is pcm material in the core there is a tpv generators and in the side there is electric heater for electricity uh, storage Electric energy storage. In the first case, a simple electric heater is used for melting the PCM. Uh, otherwise, we can use inductive electric heater when we are using electrical, magnetically active or conductive material like silicon, metallurgical silicon or iron. In both cases, an electrical energy is stored in the form of latent heat within the PCM. Okay, next is solar energy storage. In this case, concentrated solar power heats the inner walls of the vessel containing the PCM. When the walls are heated, the PCM will melt down or store energy. If the light concentration factor is high enough, the solar heat will produce a melting of the PCM and consequently solar energy will be stored in the form of latent heat. That's it. Now, we have stored the energy now we want to convert this energy into electricity when we use then we use a tpv converter 
In both the cases, the stored heat is released in the form of electricity by using a TPV converter, which comprises a number of infrared sensitive photovoltaic cells that directly produce electricity from the radiant heat. In contrast to the conventional heat engines, the contactless nature of the TPV converters enable extremely high temperature operations, which is essential for this kind of system. As a result, it will store more energy and give us more output, more energy density. TV, TPV can provide extremely high power densities at low maintenance cost, along with the silent operation, which is important for decentralized energy storage application. Now, working. When electricity is demanded from the TES system, the TPV generator is moved in the cylindrical cavity from the inner walls of the vessel. From now on, we call this as emitter. Then the TPV converter is irradiated by the emitter and this will produce electricity. During this process, the PCM solidifies, creating a crust of solid around the emitter. This crust difficults the flow of heat from the liquid PCM in this concern, the higher solid phase thermal conductivity of the high temperature PCM mitigates the impact of this effect on the output power system that will be high power output. Now, as we explained above that silicon is most or advantages to use in this system, similarly boron can be used. Silicon has a temperature that, that is latent heat of 1800 joule per gram and boron has 4650 joule per gram. But it is advantageous to use silicon because silicon has higher thermal conductivity. Here is a graph between latent heat and the melting point. As we can see, silicon and boron both have highest latent heats, but we consider silicon because of its higher thermal conductivity that is that boron do, doesn't have. Next, there is a graph between specific energy and energy density that we got as output here. There are different salts, different metals we are using, but silicon TES shows the highest specific energy and the highest energy density because as compared to lithium ion, lead acid batteries, both, both give as we can see, lead acid batteries give us uh, specific energy in the range of 80 to 100 and lithium ions give in the range of 100. That is very low as compared to silicon TS. That's why we will prefer silicon thermal energy storage because it will give us higher energy density and specific energy. So silicon and thermal energy storage can be uh, store in silicon we can store energy in the form of thermal and electricity and then convert it into electricity when we are in need with the help of tpv converters that's it these are the references and thank you that's all from my side